everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It is Friday, October 21st, and we are back from Lightbox out in California. Back in the studio, back to drawing. It's Friday, I can't wait. And we have a special guest today. Right here, Khaled Albano, right? Yes, yeah. I said it right. Khaled, we, it's so funny, we've got such a fun relationship. Khaled first came to our, our workshop uh, pre-COVID, right before everything shut down, in Sarasota. He came to our watercolor workshop uh, that Ronnie Williford and I were teaching. And then the next time we met, we everything shut down for a couple of years. The next time we met was in Germany. He came to our workshop in, uh, in Berlin, in Germany, uh, back in May. And then, uh, and then we just ran into each other again out in Los Lightbox. Angeles at Lightbox. And now he's back in Orlando. And so I said, all right, you're in Orlando, let's get together, and why don't you be a guest on today's live stream. So here we are. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to have you. This is great. And if the sound's a little funky today, uh, we forgot to charge We forgot to charge my lapel mic, and so we're using uh, my microphone on my uh, webcam. So My bad. <laughs> yeah, so Dustin's going to be a little distant today. But um, So we're going to be animating today. I've gotten, obviously, I've been gone for a long time. I haven't been at my desk for consistently for quite a while so I, I want to get some as much snow bear done as I can because if I don't work on it it's not going to get done so I'm going to be I've got a shot that I've got roughed out and I've just got it in between it and so we're working on smoothing out the shot today I'll show it to you in just a minute but um uh the big thing is uh in two and a half weeks we're going to be doing our uh camping plain air workshop uh, another watercolor workshop uh that's going to be here in Florida over at Wakiva Springs, actually in my backyard, about 200 yards from here, there's a big youth camp. And uh, we're gonna be renting out that camp, a bunch of cabins and lecture halls and all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, we're gonna be watercolor painting for, for the whole week from Monday through Friday. And I think we have two spots left I or think three. I think we have two or three, like spots, two or three left. spots left. Yeah, so if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash camp, camp thank you yes. slash camp um, you can get more information on that uh, like I said there's we, we've capped it at 30 and we've got 27 now so we're almost full uh, it's gonna be a blast uh, matter of fact we were just out there yesterday kind of confirming places we want to paint and uh, um, and then talking about scheduling and things like that basically each day we're gonna you know start the day at about 8 a.m. we're gonna have breakfast at 9 a.m. we head out and do our first painting uh, Ronnie and I will be demoing and then we'll be working with everybody uh, then we're gonna break for lunch come in uh, actually uh, Vedanta who's been in the food industry for 25 years my, my wife she's gonna be cooking for everybody and we're getting all the food together so she's gonna be providing lunches uh, that where we'll eat out in the field and then we'll do an afternoon afternoon painting session and then uh, we'll come in we'll have dinner and then um, we're, we're going to do lectures. So Ronnie will do a lecture. I'll do a lecture. Um, we'll do all kinds of fun stuff. And then we've got big bonfires and all kinds of uh, stuff. And so we're going to go out there in the evening. We'll have a little bonfire. We'll have s'mores, whatever it might be. And then we'll head off to bed and do it again the next day. And so we'll be doing that all week. It's going to be great. So, like I said, if you want to check it out, it's creatureartteacher.com slash camp. You can get more information. There's only three spots left, so jump on it. And then the other thing, what, what else uh, we got? Art books. Oh, yeah, so the books are for sale. Um, I've got my Art of Aaron, uh, Art of Aaron Blaze, Volume 1. That's, that's almost sold out. We've, we've got just a, uh, well, relatively almost sold out. We've got 100 or, about 100 or 200 copies left, which sounds like a lot, but we started with 4, 000, over 4,000 copies. Which is a lot. Yeah, so if you want to get that book, I would suggest jumping on it. And then my uh, 100 Drawings book is also available. But uh, what's even more exciting is we've got the Art of Aaron Blaze Volume 2 available uh, in pre-order. That book's going to be coming out hopefully the second quarter of next year. So probably around June-ish. Um, we're hoping to have that out. But you can order it now. And, uh, and we're actually talking about... Trying to get a little case for the two volumes as well. Oh, really? Yeah, putting something together for that. But the first 500 copies sold are guaranteed a signature. So uh, we're going to do that. 
So go there to creatureartteacher.com slash books. Creatureartteacher.com slash books. And U.S. customers get free shipping with the code USA Books. All right. U.S. customers get free shipping with the code USA Books. In case you didn't hear Dustin. All right. Shut up, Aaron. Let's draw. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right. Oh, uh, do we want Vedanta doing any questions? I guess not. Um... Have to, uh, Actually, she's busy anyway. I, we didn't set it up. Yeah, so right now, uh, I the best I can do is uh, read out uh, YouTube and Facebook questions. Um, so if there's anybody on any other channels that uh, want to ask any questions, be, be sure to hop over to YouTube and Facebook so I can read them out. So Khaled is, uh, you're from Kuwait, correct? I'm from Kuwait. Yes, yes. and... Uh, we had, a, like I said, we met in Sarasota. Really, really cool dude. Very nice guy. And we've we just keep running into each other around the world, which I dig. Or I'm chasing you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're staying in uh, Tampa. You're going back and forth between Tampa and Orlando Tampa, right now? Orlando. And then you're going down to Miami today, Miami you said. Right now, yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome. It's pretty crazy, yeah. So you went to school here, didn't you? I did go to uh, University of South Florida, yes. Yeah, that's great. So what brought you here to go to school? Um, actually, I'm not going to school right now. I'm uh, actually like, I'm interested in art a lot. So uh, yeah. I've been taking a lot of workshops and with you guys with, uh, let's say there are a lot of conferences out in California. So I've been going there as well. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities, I think, in the U.S. more than like, in anywhere else to kind of uh, explore your art, improve your art. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was funny because when we, when we saw each other in Germany, um, I remember you came up to the desk, hey, man, how you doing? I was like, damn, I know your face. Why can't I, I, couldn't, I couldn't play? He said, Sarasota. It's like, oh, my God, yeah, hey, man. Yeah. It was great. And uh, Shelly uh, Guerrera on uh, Facebook says, Hey, uh, say hi to my nephew Elijah watching with me today. Hey, Elijah. Hi. Hi. Hey. And a lot of people have been saying that, they, that they've that uh, they made their pre-orders for, for the Part 2 book. Oh, that's great. And Martin and Erica. Martin Berger. Martin Berger. Is Martin Berger? <laughs> Actually, do you want to read questions at all, Vedanta, or you want to, st not to put you, out, not to throw you me? under the bus? I'm cooking right now, and then I have to get the girls at two, but I can come in for maybe half an hour, a little while. Okay, no, no problem. I was just, yes, yeah, so I, I heard your voice. I thought maybe you could, if you wanted to I come. I just wanted to say hi to Martin and uh, and Zangji and. Uh, Zangji's coming. Zangji's going to be here, and Erica's Erica, going to be here. Uh, and I don't know who else is on here. All the usual suspects. Julia, I think, is on. Actually, it might be late for Julia. And uh, a question from YouTube. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, pronounce the name. Uh, <laughs> but it's no, it's, a, it's in a. Um, oh, it's a different it's language a different, that you can't uh, read. A, a script, a different yeah, script. Different script. Um, but it writes, uh, dear Aaron, uh, could you please advise? It's about panoramas. For example. If several characters move across the panorama at different speeds, then at what speed does the background move? Uh, how does it work? If they're moving at different speeds and you're panning with them, you're going to basically, you're going to take the dominant character, whoever's driving the shot, and you're going to follow that character. If you're following the group, then you're probably going to average the speed. Some characters will be going a little slow for the pan. Some characters will be going a little fast for the pan. It really It's really driven by what the shot is intended to do. So if you're following a main character, then the, the pan will follow that character. If you're just following the crowd, then the pan will average out the crowd, usually, if that makes sense. And Julia says hello from Facebook. Oh, Julia is there. Okay. Julia hey, is here. hey, Julia, what's the time difference in Greece? Is it seven hours? I think it's seven hours, because I think that's where... Julia's in eight Athens. Athens? Yes. That sounds exotic. <laughs> it's, it's in Athens. It's in Athens. 
It sounds old. I think even in Kuwait, it's seven hours. Yeah. It is, right? So maybe it's eight hours in Athens then? Oh, wait a minute. Kuwait's further. What's further from Kuwait us? Says, Kuwait yes, or... it's seven hours. Seven hours, okay. Seven yeah. Now, the person I was asking about the panorama uh, on YouTube uh, uh, says, I'm asking because I found one exercise. The task is to make an animation of a rider on a horse, a dog and a hare in one panorama. Therefore, I got a little confused with the speed of the panorama. Ah. Uh. So, so I'm guessing it's a horse, horse rider. Uh, I'm guessing it's like almost like a hunting scene of the, the dog and the rider hunting for hunting a, a hare. Yeah, let me see if I can find something here. I have, uh, let me see, MP4. And uh, P. Uh, uh, Boytunes asks, uh, did you use a place and trace technique when you first started? No. Uh, what is place and trace technique? Is it literally just like taking a photo and tracing moving it? Moving it, yeah. It's, it's moving it and tracing it, moving it and tracing it. No, I, I've always been, um, uh, oh, let's see here, MP, there we go. I've always been, uh, you know, flipping paper to see the movement, not placing and tracing. Here we go, horse stampede. This is one, let's see if I can get this to play. I can't remember if I panned with this or not. So here's an example of uh, some animation that I did where... It's a pan, but all the characters, it's basically averaging out. Like, the, you got the horse in the, in the center, but there's different horses going by at different rates. This is all just one, it's just one uh, cycle that I did that I painted it different colors and then resized it and panned some of them by at different speeds. So it feels like we've got a whole herd. Cool, huh? That was really smooth. Yeah. So there's a there's an example of panning. But we're staying with one main character, so we're panning with him, the one in the center there. And then another one's come and go. Throw a little horse running sound or a stampede sound in there and you got a you got animation. Thought I I thought I had something like that in there somewhere. Uh, Leo Fernandez says Man, something if... smells good. It smells like garlic. Yeah. Garlic always smells so good. Yeah. Vedanta's cooking. She's a great cook. Uh, there's someone on uh, Facebook that uh, comments and said, What a great start of the weekend with your live stream. As a former TV paint trainer, I'm so happy to see your film done on this software. I'm so happy to follow your work. And hello from France, by the way. Hey! Bonjour, bonjour. And who is it? It is uh, uh, Leo Fernandez, but I don't, I don't think it's pr properly pronounced as Leo. I think it's, it has the uh, Leo. dash above the E. So the accent? Leo. 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 Gotcha. Bonjour, bonjour. bonjour. So when you go back home, when you go back to Kuwait, um, do you have a schedule when you come back to the states? Do you have to go? Do you have to go back for a certain amount of time, and then and then come back here, or do you, or, or do you not just have a set, or do you not have a set schedule? Like usually when there are workshops here, for example, like I didn't know about your workshop, I would have attended as well. So. Oh man, sorry. Yeah, you posted it. I think like a couple of months ago. So yeah. It's kind of light box and then realize, oh, yeah. there's like everything in November, a lot of it. Expo, I know, of it. I know. Yeah. CT CTNs box, in November. Workshop, then CTNs yeah. is just so, one thing after another. So every time there is any workshops, there is any conferences, like I'm, I'm always attending. So. That's great. Yeah. That's a long haul, man. Yeah, how long is the flight uh, from here to Kuwait? I think it's uh, like 11 hours. 
16. 16, is it? Yeah. Oh. That's oh, no, that, that's right. That's for that layover. That's right. right. No, I knew that. Yeah, because we that's went. With, that's not including layovers. That's a street flying. Yeah, because we went. Flying. We flew wow. straight from. Uh, that's right. I forgot. Because we oh, went you from. Direct from, from Kuwait to here? From, no, to New York, no. probably. Oh, to New York. From Kuwait to Amsterdam. From Amsterdam, I think, to uh, New York. And then from New York to Orlando. Yeah, because Nick and I, when we went to Nairobi, we flew on Emirates. And so we flew from New York to Qatar. And I think that yeah. was like 16 hours. I think you're right. 12 yeah, yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. And then from Qatar to uh, Nairobi. They have a great airport, so you yeah. don't have to worry about that. It was really nice. Yeah. I'm having a feeling this is the same person uh, on both YouTube and Facebook because uh, it's Right now, literally the same way. But, um, right, hello, Aaron. I'm, I'm from uh, the Philippines. The um, Philippines. What is your advice uh, for beginner animators? Uh, my advice for beginning animators is don't worry about mechanics so much. So, so many people get so caught up in that. Of course, it's important. But what's more important is getting the emotion, getting the passion, getting, you know, you want people to forget that they're watching moving drawings, okay? And so what you want is to get emotion and acting. So work on your acting skills. That's the most important part of animation is getting the acting down. And, um, and I know it's, it's easy to say and hard to do. I, I, I definitely get it because I went through the same thing as a young animator. I would get so caught up in working the mechanics. Um, but the problem with that is, is quite often as you're all you know kind of immersed in figuring out the mechanics you kind of forget the emotional part of it and that's the most important part of the uh of the animation and just know that it's going to take time don't be you know don't be impatient you know animation is a it's a it's a labor of love and you just gotta you gotta just do it a lot and yeah. that's that's the that's the best advice i can give you and Murdoch from YouTube asks, uh, have you ever drawn something in Blender? No, I haven't. I've never used Blender. And uh, Smilemation is also on YouTube. says, hi, Aaron. Hey. Uh, I was just wondering uh, how you got into drawing animals and where did you learn it? When I was a little kid, I come from a family of hunters. I'm not a hunter. I could never, I can't kill anything. I can't even kill a fly. But um, my family... Uh, they were, you know, they would hunt for food and never, no, no trophy hunting. And so uh, one of the things my father would hunt is ducks. And, uh, um, and they'd come back with, you know, waterfowl dinners and things like that. And so uh, my father would put out decoys. And he was also a wood carver. And so he would carve decoys uh, in, in the garage and I would sit in the garage, and I just loved birds. That was my first love was birds, and I loved all animals. I, we lived on a farm as well, and I just, I always loved animals. We had horses and everything, and I always just felt a connection with them. But I would sit with my father in the garage as he was carving the decoys, and I would study the books. So by the time I was like six years old, I knew every duck in North America and and I knew how to draw them because I would, I would copy them out of the book. I was fascinated by them. And that's how, that's where it started. And then I, you know, my parents split up when I was young. And uh, my mother moved to Florida with my stepfather. And I, I lived with my dad for a while. But then I, I, I moved, uh, lived with my mother, moved to Florida. And then I really became fascinated with all the bird life here. It was just incredible. That was back in the in the mid seventies, back in nineteen seventy six, and um, I uh, I would go out and just study birds and draw them. I was a little bird nerd. Uh, Erica Bay on uh, Facebook asks. Is, Erica Bay, who's that? I've never heard of her before. Is uh, Marshall going to be at the workshop, or is he going back to Vermont? No, I'm kicking that bastard out. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's actually, unfortunately, he's uh, he's going back to Vermont on Thursday, so he's not going to be at it. He actually was really disappointed because he knows you and Frankie are going to be there, Erica. So he's going to miss you guys big time. He did so, say to say hi. So he's leaving next week, Thursday? Yes, okay. on Thursday. And uh, Kirk that Zimmer freeloader on, uh, on Facebook asks, how was Lightbox? Lightbox was super 
super, super busy. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't even mention Lightbox. Um, it was uh, it was so busy, super crowded. Um, our booth, if I, if I, the first day, I didn't even get to go to the bathroom. We were we were so busy. I would, um, you know, I would go out and give a lecture, but then we'd be back at the booth, you know, selling books and selling prints and talking to people and. And uh, Khaled will know he it was packed. There was a lot of people. I want to take a picture with you, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. So many. So many. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, there's a line that went around the booth at one point, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's the it was um it was a it was it was tough. How was your uh, your wrist or your elbow feeling? Oh, it's fine. After yeah, after it's, all that. yeah, it's fine. Was it more hectic than uh, Berlin? Oh yeah, by far, way more hectic than Berlin. Oh. That whole trip, that whole European trip that we did, when we saw you in Berlin, that was so. It was done at such a perfect, like there was perfect little gaps where we could rest for a day, and then the workshops were, you know, maybe a day or so here and there. We never had more than fifty or sixty people in them, and it was just, it was so nice. And and uh, and then when we did the conferences, like the playgrounds. Even then, it wasn't it wasn't as to the level of Lightbox. Lightbox was just insane. It was, it was huge. Yeah, it was huge. just nonstop for yeah. multiple days exactly. on end, and just dealing with the lectures and doing the uh, all the book signings, the book drawings, then doing the TV paint demos, the more drawing, more signing. Yeah, and then one of the th uh, one of the things we're really excited about is um, you know playgrounds that put on the thing in in Berlin and. Uh, in Eindhoven, uh, they're doing one in Mumbai in February. Mumbai. Yes, in Mumbai, and uh, they want us to come out for that. And I know we have a lot of followers in India, some good friends in India. So I want to, if you're listening and you're in India right now, hopefully we're going to be in Mumbai in February. That's fun. Yeah. Now that I've said it, I'm not sure if I was supposed to say anything yet, but hey, so, it's happening. We're trying. So. So, somebody watching and going, turn it off, turn it off, <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> I've been to Delhi before. I really like India. I love it. Have you been? Well, no, we have a lot of Indians in Kuwait. Oh, do you? Yeah, a lot. Like, I've worked with them. I've with them. They're, they're really nice. We have a lot of friends there. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, you know, my art bags over here, the Arties. Actually, hand me one, hand me that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw them a promo. So this is, uh, I've, I've promoted these before. You guys have seen. This is my art bag that I carry. I've got a few of these. I carry all over the world. Rob, uh, camera, it's bro. called... Oh, oh, that's right. Sorry, <laughs> I keep looking You're at this camera. Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, I know. So this is my Artie here. So, um, uh, they're they're. Uh, if you can find the link, Dustin, and pull it up there, it's called Lilo Rosh, Lilo Rosh, Arties, and uh, these are all handmade bags, uh, and they're they're. It's a husband and wife team in India, um, and we've I've been working with them for several years. And I love their bags. They're so, um, it's perfect for a 9x12. Um, right here, as a matter of fact. I've got my 9x12 drawing pad in here. And then right here, we've got all the all my drawing utensils right there. And they're super reasonably priced. They're so well made. So I've got the opening, you know, you can put the art, your art pads in here. Plus... There's another opening here for more stuff. This one's waterproof. She she, uh, she made it with waterproof fabric. I've got another one over there. Give me the other one, Dustin. I want them to see the different colors. So this is the gray one that I, I really like that. And then this one, same thing. This one's uh, empty. I, 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 I like to collect art bags. So here's the same thing. I love this color. This one's really been out. This one's been to Japan and Africa and all over the place. Same thing, same setup. So, Arties. These are the Arties. Check them out. They're great. Lilo Rosh. I think it's LiloRosh.com, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, Lilo Rosh, L I L O R O S H dot com. Yep, I just posted the link in Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So, Lilo Rosh dot com. Show them some love. They're super affordable, they're great art bags, and they're great people. And Jelly Bellyfish asks, uh, have you always drawn in Disney style? Uh, no, not before Disney. I didn't. <laughs> but um, it's funny. It's so in, in, in part, you know, ingrained in my psyche. I don't even, I don't know. I don't think I'm drawing Disney style, but I am. I don't feel like I am, but it's so much a part of me that I am. Uh, Every says, hi, uh, how do you plan out the duration and number of frames used uh, for each action when you animate? I don't, I don't get that analytical, you know, I know how long a shot is going to be. You know, if I may animate like this shot right here is 208 frames, because that's how it falls. If I show you here, boop, let's see here. So here's my timeline. This is, this is Snow Bear. Um, these are all the different shots in Snow Bear. So uh, as they're cut together. And then here's the shot we're working on right here. So this shot has a certain duration to fit into the reel. Has a certain duration to fit into the reel. So I know that from the beginning of the shot to the end of the shot is 208 frames. So that's what I'm doing here. But as far as figuring out the number of frames for actions... And that sort of thing, no, I don't do that. I just do the action to the way that it feels right. And, you know, whatever, however number of frames it works out to be, that's what it turns out to be. Uh, do you have any plans to go, go in the Philippines? The Philippines, not anytime soon. I was in Manila. Uh, the last time I was in the Philippines was probably three years ago. Um, maybe even more, maybe four years ago. I was in Manila uh, doing a, a conference there. Uh, uh, I love the Philippines. I love the food, man. I got to get me some halo halo. I came home and I made halo halo. Erica says. Uh, Never thought about putting beans and corn on ice cream. But it, it's good, man. Mm. Beans and corn. And from uh, the talking about the art bags and Little Rosh, Erica says. Uh, I have my RD already and just ordered a watercolor sketchbook, which is coming next week. Yes, I'm, I'm supposed to talk to them about that, about doing some watercolor sketchbooks with them. Do you have a favorite Kuwait um, dessert that's you know, part, 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 you part of your culture? Any Arab dish. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of what my I can't uh, off the top of my head because don't you guys use like a, like for desserts a lot of honey and things like that so it's really sweet yeah I, I was gonna bring some but like I'm, I'm like you need some coffee with it yeah. to, to balance everything so. yeah I'm sure but Arab food there's a lot of like um, spices in it yeah it, it takes a lot of time to make like um, yeah four hours it depends on whatever that's pretty good. You have to try it. I'd love to. That's the one thing I love, you know, because we do a ton of travel, and every time we go to a different country, I'm always, you know, I, I want to, I want to do what the Romans do. Do it, you know, wherever I'm at, you know, I'm gonna try what they eat, and I, I love it. Exotic, fun food. And I, I, more often than not, I find a dish that I really love, and then when I get home, I try to make it. I look it up on the internet and then try to make it. But no one will make it better than the person, the place itself. Exactly. That's how you need to go and, well, exactly, and that's <laughs> the thing. I'm always disappointed because it's like, oh my god, I just had so and so. This is so good. I got to go home and try to make it, and it's like. That's nothing, that's not even close to what it tasted like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, Pablo on YouTube uh, says, I'm planning on going tomorrow sketching at the zoo. Any uh, supplies you recommend uh, taking? 
I recommend a large sketch pad if you have it. I just, I like using large sketch pads and drawing with charcoal. That's my preferred way of sketching at the zoo nowadays. I used to set, you know, draw in my little sketchbook, which is fine. You can do that too. But one of the things I do recommend is kind of get a list of the animals that you might be looking at. And if you're not familiar with animal anatomy, maybe brush up on the anatomy a little bit before you go, because that'll help you when you're sitting there drawing and the animals are moving around and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Sophia Animation on YouTube says, Hi, Aaron. Love your work and learned a lot from your uh, videos. Uh, question. Will you have any animation tutorials on human anatomy as well? Well, I have a course on human anatomy on the website. Um, and I have some animation in there in the human anatomy. I, I have a walk cycle, uh, run. Or maybe that's in my animation course. Of yeah, but I thought I had some in my uh, anatomy course as well. I don't think it's in the anatomy course. I think. I think. I, it, think, I, think, I think there might be like a simple walk. Yeah. But like I have a female walking toward camera. I thought that was in my anatomy course. Either way. Either way. I think it's in there. But we will do. I'm. I'm going to be doing a course on. Um, uh, paper animation. I also want to do a course on, uh, I'm going to be doing a course on um, animating, like a fundamentals of animation in Procreate. Because yeah. one thing I learned is so many people use Procreate in, in an iPad. I thought it might be kind of fun to do a, a fundamentals course for that. Guess who just said hi on Facebook? I have no idea. Deadlift. Detlef. 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 Holy moly. You remember Detlef, right? Yeah, I've been talking to him. Oh, that's great. I've seen him. We got Khaled yeah. here hey. in the studio. Yeah, I'm a little closer to the oh, yeah. camera. Hey, now hey. you can see him. Hey, Detlef. <laughs> Detlef is killing it. Yeah, he's making a favorite course as well. Oh, that's great. He's so good. I have a question about animation. Yes. So you don't use any references. Which is... I, I, I look at reference before I start, and then then I animate what I remember. Okay. Yeah. But you don't look but you don't look and animate at the same time. You like you look first and then animate. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So for instance, like the fur, you know, I'm I'm doing my own version of stylized fur underwater, but I watched hour after hour of polar bears swimming underwater to get a sense of how it's supposed to work. Okay. You know, in this shot right here. This shot right here with the polar bear swimming. You know, I, I watched lots of polar bears, just the way they swim. them. You know, they mostly use just their front paws and let their, take their feet drag behind them. You know, that sort of thing. I learn all that. You learn all that and then then I go off and do my own animation. Okay, so. that's different than what I learned. It's in three, I think in 3D, usually you look at reference at the same time and kind of animate. Yes. So. Which is, and that's that's great too. I mean, that's a that's definitely a way of doing it. Um, now, wasn't that technique used a lot in, in Disney, where you where you have the reference like right there as you're as you're drawing? Um, you just went directly trace over. Yeah, I mean, like I, I, um, hold on one second. I, uh, had, like when we did, um, Aladdin, they shot a lot of reference for that and we would get it and we could look at it. And I, I even had, you know, the, each frame kind of pegged on paper so I could flip it too, but I never used it for that. I never drew over it or anything like that. We just... I would look at key poses and then emulate the poses. But for me, for me, for me, <laughs> for me I um, what I try to do is really get a sense of the action. And keep in mind, I've been doing it for 30 some odd years too. So I, I've got, it'll just kind of embed itself in my brain. And, um, and then I go from there. 
Uh, what is your time now? Here in Russia, it's uh, 20.30 or 8.30 p.m. Yeah, you guys are seven, you're seven hours ahead of us. Yeah, right now for us, it's uh, 1.37 p.m. exactly, at the, at the, well, which I believe is 13.37, we're talking yes. that kind of time. Yes, 13.37. 13.37. And that's the way it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So what's fun now is, you know, as this gets smoother and smoother, that fur will just get really nice and fluid. And, you know, feel like it's underwater. This is the same way that I animated, if you look at the ancestors in Mulan, the ghosts in the backyard. Yeah. Whenever they moved, I, I animated all those ghosts. And when, it, when the, I animated the bodies first, but then I went back in afterwards and animated the sleeves and I animated all the sleeves with eight frame gaps in between and then in between it. So it all became very fluid. even and fluid. Yeah, yes. it looked, looked like it was underwater. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm animating all the fur on eights and then in between it all evenly. So you get that nice fluid kind of feel. Uh-oh. Martin's a little angry. <laughs> Martin? Martin! <laughs> the Lightbox live stream was in the middle of the night here in Europe. Aaron, how dare you do a live stream when we are asleep? I know. It's my fault. How Trust dare me. You? I'm a dad. I'm used to everything being my fault. <laughs> I thought they were always my fault. Yeah. Oh, that too. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to grab another water. You want another water? No, I got one. Okay. Here. I just can't get it up to the today. Yeah, I think I might. Grab, grab some juice. Uh, water break. Right I completely forgot about it. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. All right, slowly but surely, one drawing at a time. I'm going to eventually get this thing done. <laughs> oh, Detlef on Facebook finally saw you, uh, Colette, said, Whoa, Colette, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you end up there? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love how international we are. We see each other all over the world. Not in my wildest dreams when I was young when I... First of all, I never thought I was ever going to leave the United States, and now I've been to like 22 different countries, and or 25 or something. And then having friends all over the world is super cool. I love it, love it, love it. Oh, guess who just hopped on? Who? Zongji. Zongji? Who's that guy? <laughs> Who's that dude? He says, hi, everybody. Hey, Zaunji, I told Vedanta that you were coming to the workshop, and she got all excited. She's really excited to meet you. Yeah, make sure you guys bring your swim trunks, because we'll, we'll go take a dip or two in the springs. That water's cold, but it feels good. I love swimming in there. There's actually, there's, a, I, I, there's about 30 miles of trails out in the forest behind the house where we're going to be doing the workshop. And uh, I've got an electric bike, you know, off-road bike that I take out there. And there's a spot right on the river that you have to take your bike like eight miles to get out to it. And it's in the middle of the woods and nobody goes out there. And it's my own little swimming hole. I go in there and, and it's right past a sign that says, Danger, no swimming, alligators. And I swim right next to that sign. He's <laughs> like, eh, whatever. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm not going to take you guys swimming where there's alligators. No, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go to Gatorland and swim in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love Gatorland. I haven't been there. Since Have you ever been to Gatorland? No, never. It's awesome. It's over, it's near Kissimmee. Yeah, I know. I've, yeah, I've it, seen it. It's but... really super cool. It sounds really kind of 
corny and cheesy, but uh, it's actually really cool. Yeah, I haven't been there since I was little, like since before the big fire. Yeah. Yeah, because Gatorland at one point years back uh, got caught up in, in a forest fire and the whole the whole uh, Gatorland... Uh, I forgot and, about that. And they, yeah, they had to completely rebuild it. When was that? Oh, this was back in... Well, I thought... I think this was when we were living in California. Yeah. It was in the 2000s, right? Yeah, it was like 2000. Yeah, I can't remember. I'll look it up. But Gatorland's fun. It was November 6, 2006. Oh, okay. Yeah, fire bre broke out of Gatorland. Yeah, it was, yeah, the Gatorland lost 7,000 square feet, uh, an award-winning gift shop, and executive offices were, were all lost. And uh, also, one dwarf cro crocodile, two pythons, and two hatchling alligators were also lost in the fire. Uh, poor guys. Here's, a, here's what the aftermath looked look like. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah, the, I'm not sure. The, the, the gator head's the still there, though. Issue. It survived. Yeah, this was the uh, entrance to the park. I think it still still is just rebuilt. Yeah, it is. It's, they've rebuilt it and repainted it. And... That's, that's it? Yeah, that's, that's when it was burnt down. And, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, other photos. That's all right. Yeah. You got any more questions? Hang on one sec. We had a uh, bot in YouTube. Oh, get rid of those bots. Uh, hello, Aaron. What is your greatest strength as an animator? My bench press. <laughs> just went right. Press. My bench press, yeah. My dumbbell flies. Uh, my greatest strength as an animator, I think it's my animal animation, probably. I'm, I love animal mechanics and, um, and you know, four-legged mechanics and that sort of thing. So that's probably my, as far as, as an animator, though, I think I'm decent with emotion, though, too, and acting. I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to kind of shine a mirror back on yourself and say. But I really, I mean, the, as far as what I enjoy the most, I love, you know, juicy uh, acting scenes. And if you can couple that with, you know, an animal acting, then that's even better. That's my favorite. Yeah, Mike says, I haven't been to Gatorland in ages. Last time uh, was for a fundraiser event my high school was doing at the time when I was about 17. 17. 17. She was just 17. So one of the things is just tracking that fur. One of the hard things here is tracking that fur. You just got to flip it back and forth, flip it back and forth to make sure you're getting it right. Aaron, do you speak a foreign language? If so, have you ever animated something in another language? No, I, I'm, I'm totally American in the sense that I don't speak another language. I wish I did. That's one of my biggest regrets in life is never having learned another language. Yeah. I always wanted to learn Japanese. Japanese, uh, for me, I think it would, for us here in Florida, it would have been best to have no Spanish. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that would have been more useful when we moved to uh, California. 
Um, that or Korean. German is the best. Yeah, do you speak German? A little bit? Yeah, I know a bit. That's bit. cool. Yeah, any, I think no any, just learning any language, any foreign language would be cool. You probably had no problem at all then when you were, when you were in Germany. I did, I did. <laughs> it's different when you learn it versus when you, when you actually try, to, actually try to use it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I do love, you know, going to a, another country and just picking up what I can and using, you know, even if it's just like ordering breakfast or whatever, it's just. Learning a little bit to get by, and then you just next thing you know, you know a little bit more, and you know a little bit more. Japan, I did a lot of, you know, learning that way. And speaking of Japan, and then um, it's Spain, you know, picking up Spanish. Yeah. Speaking of Japan, and uh, on YouTube, Stark Ry says, uh, "Hey, Aaron, my name is Ryan, and I'm a longtime fan in Japan. Hey, uh, when will you come back uh, to the land of the rising sun?" You know what? Um, I have a very good friend of mine that's doing a job in Tokyo. He works for Disney. He's an Imagineer that works for Disney, and he's living in Tokyo right now. He's going to be there for the next 18 months. And we were just talking the other day about maybe getting together, Vedanta and I going to Tokyo, maybe in the next six months or so. If I go to Tokyo in the next six months, we will, we will definitely let everyone know. Yeah, Dustin hates hearing that. <laughs> That's every, Dustin's every, dream. Every time he, every time he says, "Oh, we're going to, J we're going to Japan," I'm just like, I hate you. <laughs> I've been, to, I've been to Japan four times. I love it. Nice trip. Yeah. I've wanted to go since I, since I was little. Well, where exactly is Japan? I've been to Tokyo all four times, and I've been to uh, Kyoto once and Osaka uh, three times. Oh, Osaka twice. Uh, Artsy on YouTube uh, asks, the way the bear is going to the surface reminds me of Brother Bear when he and I learns about the bear family uh, as he's underwater. Was that a reference? No, it's not a reference. And that was animated by the great uh, uh, Byron Howard. Byron Howard. Byron Howard, um, back in the day, he was um, he, he was a tour operator. He ran the tour. He was one of the tour guides in the animation uh, attraction where I worked uh, at, uh, at um, MGM Studios. Uh, we were a working studio, but we were also an attraction because we were in the park. And he was one of the tour guides. And he became a tour guide because he was trying to get in working at the studio. He's a brilliant artist and animator. He ended up getting in, did an internship, and then they put him with me to be my assistant. And I, I use assistant very loosely because he was straight up, he was just a great animator. And he was more like a, a partner with me on, on the characters. Uh, this is during Mulan on Yao and and um, and on the ancestors, and I just handed him work and he just killed it. He was so good. I learned a, a, a bunch of stuff from him, and then he went on to Brother Bear and I made him the supervising animator of Kenai the Bear, and then he went on to what did he do? He did a lot of story stuff on Lilo and Stitch, but then he, he ended up co-directing Tangled. Oh really? And then he just got the Oscar for Encanto. <laughs> he directed that. And uh, and he got the Oscar because uh, he co-directed Zootopia. Wow. Yep. So Byron is an insanely talented, uh, really all-around super nice guy. I'm very happy to have met him and gotten to know him. Very lucky. Uh, what do you think is the hardest thing to animate? A horse walking backwards down a spiral staircase. <laughs> oh, and, and uh, that same person is chipping in about uh, 
speaking different languages. Oh yeah. But this person is. Uh, um, I feel like she's Russian. I could be wrong. Well, tell her to slow down then. But she says, I, under I understand English perfectly, but I can't speak English. Like she can understand, but can't speak English. Difficulty making sentences or finding the right word in a terrible accent. Although perhaps this is from uh, little practice. Uh, probably. Most likely. I hear English is very hard to learn. I don't know if that's true or not. It can be. For me, it wasn't a struggle because since I was a kid, yeah. like I've been watching. Like, Did they teach stuff. it in school? Yeah, they've been teaching it at school and all that. So yeah. It wasn't a problem. But when you're older, learning yeah, you're, also German was kind yeah. of tough. Yeah, I think I think it's also because uh, when you're little, that's like the perfect age um, to absorb the information, and so that's why um, a lot of a lot of folks tend to be more fluent when, when they start at a younger age because yeah. they can they were able to learn it much easier back then. Yeah. But nowadays, like you can hardly have, like I can not hardly try to pronounce the proper English. Way of saying you can barely hello. speak yeah. English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even speak English right. Do you have any movies you regret being a part in? No, not at all. And, and I've, I've there's movies that I've I've been a part of that I don't like, but I've never regretted any working on any of them. I've enjoyed every film I worked on. The only one that I it was really kind of tough to get through only because of the animation style was Pocahontas. Um, I loved working with Glenn again. Glenn Keane did Pocahontas and so I worked with him on that character. So right after I finished The Lion King I went on to Pocahontas and helped them finish it. And uh, But it was a very, very controlled tight way of animating. They shot the entire movie in live action and, um, and then we they they printed out stats, you know, of the of each frame of the live action and we were supposed to use those as reference and um, we didn't rotoscope, but it was it was still pretty close to what uh, you know, we basically took what was acted by the live actors and um, utilized it for the animation. There wasn't a lot of room for originality for us. And so of all the films I've worked on um I really don't remember much of working on it because I just wanted to get through it. <laughs> MK on uh, YouTube sounds like she's saying this. Okay. <laughs> says, says, could you give me a short animation idea? A short animation idea. Let's see. Something to do. A short right. animation idea. Come up with a... Uh, a little, a rabbit. We've got our my my our our little back porch bunny has been running around today. He's been visiting me in the studio. I don't know if you saw him or not. I yeah, he's a little rabbit. We keep him out in the back porch. He's got free run to the back porch. And uh, and then our cat, our house cat, let go and they like to antagonize each other. So and it makes for some funny little interactions. So a house cat and a bunny meet each other. What happens? There you go. There's your animation idea. <laughs> Completely random. And our dog couldn't. He couldn't care less about the rabbit. And then the rabbit knows that, so he just goes and hangs out by the dog. It's really funny. How old is your dog? I think he's about nine. Oh. Yeah, his name's Achilles. Yeah. He's super cool. Very, very smart. Uh, do you think 
2D animated movies uh, can still thrive in today's day and age like before. By the way, uh, always loved your work since I was 12. It's been 10 years of being a fan. Ah, thank you. That means you're 22. Um, no, I don't think I don't think any 2D will ever be like it was before. It's always going to evolve and change, and nothing's going to be like it was before. Um, but I do think, with streaming platforms and the need for content nowadays, that sort of thing, I think um, 2D is definitely good. there's going to be more of a demand for 2D. One of the big reasons 2D went away is that it's it's uh, the audiences. You know, Disney was really kind of setting the path in the 90s for 2D, and I think people kind of got sick of the Broadway style a little bit. And I think the stories started to get a little bit lazy, and um, I think it was our own fault. Plus, we we negotiated. You know, as the artists, we negotiated ourselves right out of jobs because. You know, in the mid '90s, the demand for animators was so high, and so, and you know, we were all guilty of it. We we negotiated really high contracts, and so, you know, in '91, '92, during the Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast days, you know, those films didn't cost nearly as much as, say, Lion King, uh, or actually after Lion King, the films really got expensive because Lion King was what launched all the other studios because it did so well in the box office and then everybody wanted to get in on it and so all of a sudden if you were an animator you had you were a commodity and um and we were able to really command high salaries but what happened was you know that could only sustain itself for a few years before you know the films you know as soon as you get one film that doesn't perform well and you're you know you're paying people crazy amounts of money then something's got to give and the first thing it's got to give is the salary so that went first and then and then this then the movies themselves went so we kind of negotiated ourselves right out of our jobs and i hear people you know whining and complaining about it but the only people you know that we should be we should blame is ourselves but even though like for me what i see is that 2d animation is It'll help even if you want to transfer to 3D animation. Yes. So I've seen a lot of people doing great 3D animations. It's even though you want to pivot or change, it'll be way easier. Yes, that's a great point. I agree. Oh, what do you think of Netflix animation? Uh, they're putting up more 2D content lately. Yes, exactly. I love it. I wish they, uh, you know, they cut back a little bit recently, and that they canceled some pro, uh, some shows that they were developing, and a few people lost their jobs. I think they probably dove in too fast, um, but I hope they don't, you know, backpedal too far because it's really exciting what they're doing. I'd love to see more people. I know it's hard. But more people doing what I'm doing, like independent projects, small independent projects. Because, you know, I'd like to be able to do Snow Bear. Um, and I'm handling the whole budget, so, you know, I don't need another studio to handle the budget. Um, and then see where it goes. You know, see if I can get it picked up with, with somebody. Shorts are hard to market. That's one thing. You know, short content is hard to market. But there still might be something out there. Uh, Kirk Zimmerman says... Uh Hey, Aaron, I've been going through your course, uh, How to Draw Birds of Prey, and it's awesome. It's a little bit big. <laughs> it is. It's a little what too your, big. What is your favorite bird to draw while doing the course? Um, oh, that's a tough one. You know, I think the the, uh, the harpy. Those harpy, that harpy eagle is super cool. Yeah, seeing that. That bird in person. in person is crazy, oh, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> it's like their claws are the size of a grizzly bear's claws. They're insane. They're huge. Oh, I was so happy because I wasn't having to draw the feet. Now I've got to draw the feet. <laughs> How long will the uh, 
smell very shortly. Ten minutes. We are ten minutes. Now the end of it, I'm probably going to reboard so that the time might change a little bit, but it'll still be around ten minutes. Right now the ending isn't quite giving me the punch that I want it to give. So I'm going to try reboarding. I've got an idea for it and we're going to reboard it and see how it looks. Great, Raymond Gaming uh, on YouTube says, question. Question. Uh, question. You once lived in Vermont. Uh, have you ever come back uh, to this area to paint autumn foliage or Lake Champlain? I have, yes. I was born in Burlington, and uh, I lived there until I was about eight years old. And then I moved to Florida when I was eight. And, but I go back a fair amount. Um, I'm definitely going to be back. You know, I don't know if you know or not, the person asking this question. The next Total Eclipse, it's a big one, uh, Total Eclipse, um, that's going to happen in the United States is going to be in April. I can't remember the date, April of 2024. And it's going to go right over uh, Isle, um, uh, Isle of Mott, uh, right over in, in Burlington or in uh, uh, North Euro, you know, the, the islands in, in Lake Champlain. It's going to go right over that area and the the the, uh, the shadow of totality and uh, so we plan on going up there and renting a little lake house and uh, being there for that it's going to be super cool and it's supposed to be a long one it's supposed to be like three or four minutes long the uh the, the eclipse itself you ever seen the total eclipse no it's it's, it's cool it's super it's cool dustin and i went to the one in that the last one that hit here in the united states The, for one, when you when the eclipse is when you see a complete eclipse happen, like it goes from night to day, like that. But it's not even like a full night or a full day or not even. It's not even like a shade. Like it, like the whole color tone just changes. Yeah, everything's instantly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, like someone and you end up switched like a did a light tone switch. Of shadows around you. And if you look in the horizons, you can see... Where, it's like sunset the all the way around you. Yeah. yeah, sunset all around. And the temperature... Instantly drops. drops. Like, it was pretty warm that day. Like, it was... It was hot. Yeah, it was, it was pretty an... hot. I don't... Like, I would say maybe... Like, maybe 25, 26 Fahrenheit. Or not Fahrenheit. No, uh, Celsius. Celsius. Um, it was about... Then it just drops drastically by, down to, like... I'm just going to guess in Celsius here, but I would say like maybe 20. No, I'd, I'd say less than that. I mean, it, it dropped significantly down to like maybe 70 and 70s Fahrenheit. So like, like basically it's a major drop in temperature. Yeah, that was cool. I don't know if you have it this way. I don't know. Hmm? I don't know if we've been through it in Kuwait. Yeah, because I mean, Kuwait's a relatively small area, so... Bear. To have, yeah, to have the uh, total eclipse go over Kuwait would be, wow. that would be pretty, pretty unique. I'm sure it happens, but like a very, very. What's the population? Do you know? Do you have so any idea? I have no idea. Probably like around, I'm just going to guess probably I'm wrong or something, but one million? I don't know. Yeah. What's the biggest city? Biggest city? Actually, yeah. <laughs> Kuwait City is the city, you It amazes me how animators realize how long a scene is going to be before it even starts. I remember the mentor looking at the sketch saying, this scene is for three seconds, or this scene 
is no longer than one and a half seconds. For me, it's like uh, like magic, and I still can't do it. Yeah, that just comes with with experience. That just comes with experience. You get better and better at it. Yeah, I've probably been asked this before, but if you were to relearn drawing, what is the first thing you would learn? Also, how does one build confidence with their drawings? By doing it a lot. You build confidence by doing it a lot, just like anything else. The more familiar you get with it, the more confident you get with it. And then what was the first part? Um, what would I... What's the first thing you would learn if you, if you were to relearn drawing? I, I don't know. I think, I think the way we get into drawing as kids, if you go into it naturally, I think is the right way to do it. You draw from your imagination. You do it because it's fun. You don't have to get too academic about it. I don't think kids should worry about drawing academically until you, you know, start getting into an older age. You know, don't take the fun out of it. I don't think I would change anything. I, you know, I started drawing. Someone, I, I did a, an interview with with Procreate uh, while I was in California recently at the Lightbox, and the, one of the questions was, "What's one of, one of my earliest art memories?" And um, I, when I was a little kid, there's two of them. My mother, uh, we didn't have enough money to buy art supplies, and so my mother would, um, you know, back then there was no plastic bags; everything was done in paper bags paper sacks, you know, for, for groceries. And so my mother would uh, take the paper bags and she'd cut them, cut them up and lay them out flat on my high chair. And I would, and she would just give me crayons and I would just draw, draw, I mean, for hours I would sit in my chair and draw. And then, um, and then I would get under the, under the dining room table. Or di I'm looking at the wrong camera again. I'd go into our, the, the dinner table, under the dinner table, and I would, uh, draw underneath that with my crayons and so the entire table had drawings all underneath it it was like the Sistine Chapel and um, and it was fun you know it was a lot of fun and so that's I, w I wouldn't want anyone I wouldn't want to change that I wouldn't want anyone taking that away from me And Zoe says, speaking of Lightbox, uh, you met James Gurney finally. Can you tell us more about what that was like? Yeah, we met James Gurney. We had breakfast with him and his wife, Jeanette. And uh, we had a great time. We were talking about, you know, the old his old days when he worked with Thomas Kincaid. And they, they did the hobo ride across in 1982. They hopped the trains and lived like hobos on the trains and traveled the country and we talked about all kinds of stuff. It was great. We talked about AI art and what it means to artists. And it was just a really fun philosophical little conversation that we had. Um, I love James. I love his work. And, and he's one of the things I discovered in meeting him is how intense he is. He's really thoughtful about everything. And if you recommend a book, he pulls out a notepad and he writes it down. And you know, it was really neat. And we, you know, he, one of the things he did, the, the movie uh, that Batchy Studios did, um, Fire and Ice, it was the Frazetta, Frank Frazetta movie. Um, he and Thomas Kincaid did all the backgrounds, like 1,500 backgrounds, 1,800, 1,600 backgrounds for that movie. And they did them all. <laughs> two, two guys. It was pretty wild. I heard that story as well. software that you're currently using this is tv paint yeah i didn't even think I'm, I'm so used to using it i forgot to mention to people what i'm using so this is tv paint software it's for me a lot of people ask me well why don't you use toon boom well i've never used toon boom because i've never had to um this tv paint was recommended to me oh about 10 years ago i had done a commercial i worked on a commercial uh for a company in england called uh, John Lewis. It was a, it was a department store called John Lewis. And uh, I did this commercial called The Bear and the Hare. And uh, it was this, you know, hibernating bear and the, and the hare wants him to 
stay up with him and it's a, it's a cute commercial it was done um in a really unique way we we animated everything traditionally um and then everything was printed on boards and then cut out and um and we uh uh, and then they were placed into the the cutouts were placed into uh, 3D sets like real sets. But um, anyway, after that commercial, I realized I should probably go digital. Every I I was the only guy animating on paper. Everyone else was you know animating on the Cintiq. And so I I asked the the Dom, uh, Dom Carolla who I was working with. We used to work at Disney together, and it was his studio that we were working at. And I asked him you know, what I should do. And he goes, you know what? I work in both Toon Boom and TV Paint. And he said, I think you're going to like TV Paint. It's more for 2D animators, he thought, that are used to paper and, and everything. And so I went home, bought TV Paint, and just started on it. And I've never used anything else. I love it. I absolutely love it. And since then, I've gotten to be friends with the people at TV Paint. And, and uh, it's great. So TV Paint, it, that's a, it's, a good, it's good software. And uh, and you can you can do entire movies on it. Now, if you're just a hobbyist, TV paint might be a little bit much for you. Um, it's it's not cheap. You can get a student discount for sure. And actually, if you're a member on our website, um, you get a, a a big discount on TV paint as well. I think the the I think the discount is almost the same amount as the cost of our website. As, as a membership on our website, so it, it pays for itself. Uh, Martin Berger asks... Martin Berger! Martin Berger. Uh, what do you have <laughs> some Easter eggs of Snow Bear, like one building Mickey Mouse out of the snow? That's one for you. <laughs> you know what? I wasn't... I, that hasn't even crossed my mind, but now that you mentioned it, that could be kind of fun to do. I wasn't going to do that. I think what we'll do is I've got I've got three more drawings to do before we've got the whole thing set to be on fours. I think we'll get those the, those three drawings done and then we'll call it a day for today. All right. Dustin's got to move into his new apartment. Yay! Dustin's well, moving go into up, a new pad. I got to go pick up the keys after this live stream. I've got a, lot, got a lot of packing up to do and a lot of figuring out what, what to get over there first. Nick, actually, Nick should be getting close to town as well. Nick's still driving. <laughs> he, still he, Nick drove back from L.A. We got back on Monday night late. Nick, Nick left the same time we left. We left L.A. at like Monday uh, morning, afternoon, and Nick got on the road at the same time. But... Uh, We've been home for four days. He's been driving for four days. Yeah, Nick. I mean, heck, Nick. Uh, was it yesterday or was it the day before? Nick. Nick called me the, the morning, like I was still still waking up, and Nick calls me at like eight forty five in the morning. Yeah, saying, why are you waking up at eight forty five? He's like, aren't you supposed to be in the office by now? It's, it's almost eleven. I'm like, what? It's it's all. It's not even nine o'clock yet. It's like, oh, oh, I'm still used to, uh, still used to uh, California time. <laughs> yeah, which is weird because I don't know. He wasn't. He wasn't in California. He wasn't on Pacific time. I don't understand why. Maybe uh, he was still on Pacific time. I don't know why he was trying to call me in the fir uh, first place. I mean. Oh, uh, he never even mentioned why he was calling. Well, he he assumed that I was at, I was in the I was here. At the studio. Oh, gotcha. But he just lost track of time thinking that it was uh, that it was close to 11 here. Not realizing that it was, in fact, uh, the opposite. Uh, for this pair animation, do you use uh, X, X sheet to decide which frame... Uh, you need a follow through animating on tubes, etc. No, I have my timeline down below. So this is my timeline that right down here on the bottom. Each square represents a drawing, 
and uh, and there's a number. If you, I, I don't think I don't have my uh, uh, the little thing where I can highlight. But there's uh, there's a number on each square, and it, like they're all these are all held for four. So there's a four on each one. That means it's four frames. There's four frames right there. Let me see if I can widen it out. So there's four frames across right here between each drawing. And so eventually these are going to be all on twos. So I have to put in betweens between each of one of these drawings next. So I've got to get the eights down to fours and then I'm going to put all the fours on twos. And that's what I follow. I just follow it on the timeline. If that makes sense. Uh, what does it mean to be on fours? It that means each drawing is held for four frames. Yeah, four, but we can still, if you watch this play, you can still see it kind of strobing. It, it doesn't move smoothly. And so the, the, when you put it on twos, meaning the drawing held for two frames, that's when it becomes smooth. You don't have to do a different drawing for every frame. Um, that's called ones. And for fast action, that's what we usually do. But, um, but if you look at like this, where am I? Right here. This shot right here. Um, this is all held, this is all on twos right here, this one. And it's, and it plays relatively smoothly. There's a little bit of jitter, but it's not too bad. Do you usually plan your scenes in eights? How do you choose this? Uh, I usually start out on eights. Yeah. Eight sixteens, you know, if it's slow action. Shoot, I just played that with music. I hope that doesn't get flagged. Doggone it. I mean, it was only a few, it was only like under... Yeah, I don't know. I was talking all at the same time, so maybe that'll mess it up. I don't I want to like get flagged. Like, What's that? I think it's like if it's anywhere like 30 seconds or longer than... Oh, gotcha. At least that's my guess. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. So we're getting there. So three more drawings. Once again, if I play this, you imagine like you play you play a copywritten song like literally like a second flag. <laughs> well, that happens. That's the thing. It happens. I played I played some of this a few weeks ago during one of the live streams, and I once again I only played I don't think I played thirty seconds worth. Maybe I did. Maybe I played more, and uh, it, it got flagged for sure. Yeah. So. I just picture that point being like that. Flag. <laughs> <laughs> One note. One note. <laughs> Flag. Come on. So uh, at Lifebox, you tried the Wacom, I think, the new one, right? Yeah. The, the new 27? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a big difference between this and that? The. It, it, um, no. No, uh, it, I, what I, the thing I did like about it was how thin it is. This is still relatively thick. Um, and I still like working, you know, on a 32 inch rather than a, um, you know, 27 inch. It they was cool there, that the screen went right to the edge. The screen goes right to within, I don't know, three quarters of an inch to the edge, which I thought was neat. Uh, but... You know, for me, I'm, I'm going to stick with drawing with the uh, 32. the 32. I really like the 32. I got the 22, but it's kind of like it's good, but you feel like you need more space. Yeah. I put more references. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I've got my I've got my screen up here. And then usually I might even have another screen. And we're hooked into his screen as well. Yeah. So like I can, if I take this, right. you can see it goes boop over to his. Yeah. And so that way I can monitor the uh, the live stream, which is being run through his computer. And meanwhile, I'm over over here on my laptop monitoring the the all the questions Question. and everything. Okay. And today, and I think we did this. Um, the week before, because Nick was again out of town Nick, Nick, to Nick, 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 to California, um, I started learning how to actually initiate the stream because 
I simply push a button here, but it, he actually takes a signal and through uh, through a software or through a website, and that's how you get it on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch all at the same time, because he has to enable certain switches okay. on a certain program, and so I just learned how to do that, so I'm doing that too, but just a whole bunch of, so you guys can watch. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as a beginner animator, what should I animate to get started? Um, I'm not sure how much of a beginner you are, but if you're just starting, you know, I would learn the bouncing ball and the flower sack, and um, definitely the flower sack. That'll you know teach you timing and and uh, attitude, acting, all of that. When I was learning uh, intro to animation, I think through the computer. They taught us, I think, balancing ball, um, bowling, how to like make different balls fall at the same time, like heavy. Yeah, like that's heavy. good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Understanding physics. Yeah. And then kind of the character. Oh, that's great. So. Yep, that's good. That, that makes sense as well. Yeah, I think the first thing I tried to animate was when I was in art class in middle school. And I tried animating a stick figure. Oh, did you, uh, I, I remember we did the same thing when I was a kid. Yep. Did it animate, did like one of those uh, um, flip book style. Yeah. And it was in the corner of my, of my book. And, uh, uh, and it was a stick figure doing like a what looked like a sidekick a punch and then a spin around with the elbow <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and i tried my best in like like one in you know, like one frame he would be like this high and then the then the next drawing would be like this low <laughs> it's just it was very a lot of inconsistencies but i mean for the first time, first time. And the last time i mean i'm really rather proud of it all right don't know where that went off to. So I just moved uh, the arm a little bit because I, I failed. I failed to uh, get it within the arc. I wanted it to be a little bit better arc. So if you watch, if you watch the path of action that the paw takes, it needs to do this kind of sweeping arc over the top. Uh, for a while, did you animate Raja or? Uh, or just Raja, or did you also animate characters like Carpet or Abu? I animated Raja and Jasmine. Jasmine. You supervised for Raja. I supervised Raja. And helped out for. And Jasmine. I helped out with Jasmine. Mark Hen. Mark Hen was the supervising animator of Jasmine. And for Mulan, were you supervisor for both Yao and the ancestors? Yes. And were there other characters that you helped animate in that one, too? Um, no. Because my hands were pretty full with those two characters. Yeah. And you mainly focused on the, when it comes to ancestors, your focus was the main, the head ancestors. I, I did, yeah, I, but I, I animated a lot of the other ancestors as well. Gotcha. Byron handled most of them, but I did a few of them. You know, the guy counting the ab on the abacus. Oh, yeah. And all that, and I did that. And then uh, the cross-dresser one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I animated yeah. that. Yeah, and become a cross-dresser. I animated that shot. I didn't know that. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with the dialogue on those shots because they're, it was really broad. Yeah. My, my favorite shot from that scene will always be when the head ancestor first uh, is first revealed, like how he uh, opens up his arms to reveal himself, and then yeah, with that the one wave he reveals his cane, and that same gesture grabs the cane. Yeah, I'm like man, that's, that that staff is cool. Thanks, that man. Was that was cool. my animation. I it took me quite a few tries to get that right. I'm guessing every time he animates it, like he would 
missed the grab and you're just like, oh crap. Well, there's more, how do you get him to come out of this organic shape? So, you know, getting the arms to reveal him. And then you know, I just wanted everything to be fluid. So he, when he did that, it just re it, it, it formed the cane and then he just went and grabbed it again. So yeah. I wanted everything to stay fluid. Next, I think he does it like from, from bottom up and reels the cane like that and then yeah. Ooh. Yeah, he yeah he does. He goes like that yeah. and then up and then grabs boom. it. Like he does like half a circle. And then. It's almost like um, what is that? Uh, what is, it? is it Tai Chi? Yeah, Tai Chi. Where, where they do the, yeah. the motions to yeah uh, focus their energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely had that. That Tai Chi kind of motion to it. Feel. Yeah. Did you do? Did you um, look into that as any? I didn't. Of? That's a. That's a. No, I just wanted something really fluid. Tai Chi is a very fluid yeah. um, practice. As an animator, did did you have a chance like of putting your own stuff into an animation, and then get it, getting get accepted? Or Do you mean hiding stuff? Not hiding, but like, probably like you have an idea you want to implement it. Like oh, into a shot? shot? Oh, absolutely. It, it, actually, that's every shot. It was almost every shot because we'd have the storyboards for the shot and the, we'd sit with the directors and see what they were looking for as far as what's happening. But it's like an actor acting out a scene. They can be directed by the director, but it's them acting it. And so it's them putting themselves into it. And so... You know, we weren't directed to do every movement. We were directed to act the scene, and then it was up to us to come up with the way that we wanted to act it out. And what was nice is, that, you know, as an animator, you're giving a lot, given a lot of um, free reign to come up with new ideas. You know, and, and you know, if we let's say, we, you know, we're there's a shot and and the, it's storyboarded in a certain way, but you might have a different idea that might that you think might be better. And uh, we always had the ability to talk to the directors and say, "Hey, I got this idea," and uh, and they could either say yes or no, and, and it would you know we go on from there. So it was it, it's a good system. Yeah, one of my favorite uh, stories of of adding to the shot is uh, the one that you when is the scene with uh, Yao punching the guy in the gut. Yeah. And then. Uh, and then kissing his fist afterwards. Yeah, because I showed it to Alex Cooperschmidt. I, the, it's when we first meet Yao in Mulan, he punches the guy that, with the dragon tattoo. Look, this tattoo will protect me from harm. And then Yao punches him. <laughs> and uh, and I showed it. To, and I, well, the way I animated it was I just had him punch him. And I showed it to Alex, who was he was animating Khan. He also animated Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. And, all kinds of great stuff. Khan is uh, Mulan's horse. Yes. And Alex goes, no, no, Steif, no. He wouldn't do that. It would, it, you know, it's, it's Yao, man. He, he loves his fists. They're, they're his number one weapon. If he, if he punched somebody, he'd kiss them afterwards. And I was like, oh, man, that's a great idea. So that's what I did, and that's what ended up in the movie. Different shots into one animation. Different shots into one animation. I'm not sure. Like me, maybe like having multiple characters in a single scene, maybe. Sometimes it's different animators, and we and the the, the dominant and the dominant character gets done first. Um, I think if that's what you mean, I'm not sure. Multiple, what did you say? Multiple characters in the one animation? Together, different shots into one animation. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand what that means. Uh, do you ever feel dissatisfied with a drawing? If so, how do you keep from <laughs> feeling discouraged? Uh, I've been struggling with that uh, a bit lately, and I've I like how chill you are with when you draw. It's calming. <laughs> it'll well, it, it'll go away. <laughs> it'll go away. 
you know, that, that being dissatisfied, you just got to draw a lot. No drawing is precious. Don't, don't feel like you have to keep every drawing. Maybe Most so. of, a lot of my drawings end up in the trash. I gotta be honest, there's, there were quite a few times, uh, like you would do like maybe a, you've done like a request day or just drawing or drawing some sort of a portrait in a past dream. It'd be you know, like, oh yeah, this looks great. And I think we're going to end it with this. And once the stream ends, he just looks at me and goes, this, this doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> You're calling me out, man. <laughs> This is crap. Like, I don't like this. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. I won't Thanks. Say exactly which one? Even I, I can't remember exactly, but I just, I just remember going. This. And I don't this think I said this doesn't look good. I think I used more colorful language. More, yeah, more colorful words. <laughs> but I'm looking at the drawing like, how does that look like that? <laughs> I mean, it's not noticeable. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's funny. So just just know that even even Dad has uh, we all have off we, days. We all have that kind of struggle, and it's real. It is real. The struggle is real. All right, two thirty. We've been at it an hour and a half. Martin Berger asks, uh, how do you draw a baby orangutan that looks cute? I think it's a little <laughs> bit of sketching for a painting, but it is quite hard not to let him look like Gollum. <laughs> well, process. Let's see. Also says, most of my drawings go in the trash, quote unquote. That's where the Bancroft brothers get them, at, uh, get them and keep them safe for generations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone's asking me a question. Uh, Alexis from YouTube, uh, what is your favorite movie that your dad worked on? I would. S Honestly, I would say Brother Bear. I just love the, love the music from that one and the and love the characters, especially more than Lion King. Duke. Huh? More than Lion King. Yeah, more. I would say more than Lion King because I, I just love the Run Tooth characters. Yeah. They're, I think they're probably my favorite Disney characters, in, in of all of them. How's it going, Bear? <laughs> Don't call me that. I'm sorry, Mr. Bear. I think even like Aaron mentioned, when we were in Germany, he's like, Brother Bear is still selling. Yeah. In Germany, <laughs> so like it's, still, it's still it's still selling. Awesome. Yeah. That cracks me up. That, that amazes me. But people are still buying the movie. Yeah. That's a great movie. Yeah. And also I think it and also I think it's my favorite because it was like my real it's like my first real experience uh, from behind the scenes of like watching watching the movie come to life. Yeah. Because like like every once in a while like uh, like I would come in and visit like when you work when you worked on Mulan, I remember seeing that ancestor animation and everything, I was like, Oh that's cool, you know. But uh, I remember, like, when Dad officially got the job as a direct as the director for Brother Bear, and I just remember him coming home almost every other night with a, with a new script or new storyboards, and and every time we all went stressed into, out. See, yeah, <laughs> every time we went inside, went to the studio, we would see all the storyboards all laid out, and and every. It was like once a month he would come home with a new VHS tape of the new storyboard layout with new scratch voices and all this all this stuff. So I really got to see the whole process from from the very beginning all the way to release. Yeah. 
And I'll never forget uh, meeting Phil Collins for the first first time through a video call. Yeah. It was uh, Bring Your Child to Work Day, and uh, Austin and I uh, were were there, and we got our lunch. And as we were getting our lunch, it was like a buffet style. It was like mac and cheese, a little salad. And <laughs> Dad comes over and says, "Once you get once you get your lunch, uh, come uh, come with me. I'll, I'll meet you guys at the entrance." So we meet up with Dad, and he takes us to this uh, door, and he says, uh, I'm going to introduce you guys. Once I introduce you guys, just go over to the corner, eat your food, and just and just stay quiet. And shut up. Shut up and stay quiet. <laughs> We're like, okay, Daddy. <laughs> and he brings us in, and we see Phil Collins on the screen in his studio. They were like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the whole... It was a meeting about um, the the song "I'm on My Way." Oh yeah, yeah. We we're talking about kind of the style we wanted for it. Yeah. I'm trying to draw a little orangutan here. I got to pull up reference. I'm not doing this with any reference. <laughs> There's one. There there is one particular. Um, audio recording that unfortunately can't quite um, no mention about but is it was really really funny it had to do with the two rams the rams yeah but um, those guys were pretty foul pretty yeah. foul mouth <laughs> only for like one little one little moment <laughs> it's funny he just got the guy just got a little low carried away <laughs> <laughs> I think we found that recording somewhere in your, uh, among your boxes somewhere. I can't remember how a, 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 an orangutan's nose goes. I think their nostrils are smaller. Uh, from YouTube, are you using uh, a default Photoshop brush right now? So pretty. No, this is my, I made this brush. I made this sketch brush. It's part of my, um, if you actually sign up for my newsletter, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if you sign up for my newsletter, you can get this brush for free. Uh, did you draw on Tarzan? I did not draw on Tarzan, no. I was working on Brother Bear at the time. Why did I say draw? It, it reads out work. But either way. Yeah, but it's all right. Same thing. Yeah, at the time it was Brother, Brother Bear, as you said. So, that being said, was Phil Collins just juggling between Tarzan? And no, he was there? he was done with Tarzan when he came on oh, gotcha. with us. Were they just wrapping up on Tarzan when you were getting started? Yes. Uh, for Brother Bear, was the twist about uh, Coda's mom always being the quote-unquote big twist? Or was there another idea in mind? Well, it, originally, it was Kenai. There was no Coda in the original version. In our early version of the film, it was about brothers, you know, more about brothers. And so um, uh, Kenai was, became friends with, uh, when he goes on the road to get fixed again, he becomes friends with uh, Grizz, the big bear. And that's who his main relationship is in the story, in the original story. And, uh, and he be, you know, so, um, and it turns out the bear that he killed was Grizz's brother. And as we were making the film, it became apparent that we needed some, the story team felt really strongly that we needed a young character in the story, and that we should replace um, Grizz, who was being voiced by Michael Clark Duncan, and he was awesome, that we needed to, uh, to replace him with a kid. And Bob and I really hated the idea. We fought it, and we fought it, and we fought it, and we were starting to lose the team because they were almost going to mutiny with us. And I remember having a... a a meeting with one of the executives and say look you guys can't be directors and be this stubborn you've got to listen to your team 
And, you know, it, it, as, when you get down the road, it might not be the right idea, but it might be the right idea. You got to at least listen to them and try it out. Otherwise, if they're if they're if you're just dictating to them, you're going to lose them. It was a big lesson for us. And so uh, we listened to them and we tried it out. The next thing you know, it stuck. We liked it because we were so stubborn and set on this other way of doing things because we just couldn't see it any other way. It was a big it was a big lesson in, in for me in trying trying ideas. After that, you know, I've gotten much better at trying out new ideas. Oh, Gabby just hopped on. Gabster. So the Gabarina. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Gabby. Gabriella. Gabby, Gabby. Do you remember Gabby? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. We actually, uh, when we did our, our class in England, when we had the castle, she was there as well. She's a traveler as well. Yep, she is. <laughs> if there's an animal you don't often draw, what would it be? A lot of them. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, naked blind mole rat? <laughs> That's a real animal. I know. <laughs> And Dettler said that's a uh, really interesting story and life lesson. Thanks for sharing. Sure. But, uh, and uh, and Tug, or no, uh, Grizz. Well, it's, yeah, he became Tug. Became yeah. Became Tug. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ever watch, if you ever watch Brother Bear and uh, see the character Tug, that's that's who it was originally going to be uh, Keen Eyes' buddy. Yeah. My only regret of that is I wish we could have used Michael Clark more. Yeah. Because he was going to be, you know, the main, you know, other than Kena, he was going to be, character. yeah, he was going to be the main side character, and he was, he was so much fun to work with, and uh, and we had him signed up to work with us on, uh, on, uh, the Legend of Tembo as well, and um, but then he passed away. Very yeah. I love the photo that uh, you have of him putting me and Bob in a headlock. Yep. <laughs> And I'll tell you guys smile. <laughs> yeah, he looked, he seemed like a really cool, cool guy. He was super cool yeah. and so nice. I remember being at the uh, premiere in New York and uh, we were all, we're all at our seats and, uh, and I looked down our, our row and there was Michael Clark Duncan now in the aisle. And he just towered over everybody. Oh, he was huge. He was a like, monster. Holy crap, there's Michael Clark Duncan. He was a big guy. Never actually got to meet him in person, but I, but I did. Uh, I thought I introduced you. No, I never never met him. I, you, I think you introduced me to the, or, or I met the Dave Thomas, Rick Moranis that night. Yeah. I think you introduced me to one of the um, guys who voiced the, voiced, uh, the Rams. Oh yeah, because you'd you'd laughed so much with those guys. <laughs> Sorry, I got now that I started this, I can't stop. <laughs> Gabby said, "Miss, miss you guys. Glad I'm able to stop in for a sec because you know I'm at work." Oh, I'm glad you did. I gotta pull up. I gotta pull up real quick. Yeah, glad to see you here. Now get back to work. <laughs> I want to see what that skin color is. It's kind of a brownish with a light color muzzle. Hi, Aaron. Greetings hey, how's it going? From, greetings from Poland. What's your opinion on Inktober? Have you ever attempted it? Yeah, I did it once when they first started it way back when. But um, Inktober is a thing, you know, it's, it's, a, it's meant to get people to draw. I draw. <laughs> I draw. I draw every day. I don't have enough time to do Inktober. I'd, I'd love to do it, do more of it.
And you know what I didn't look like? I'd look at I didn't look at his nostrils. Yeah, see their nostrils are small. They're not like a chimp or I mean a, a gorilla. I drew them like a gorilla. Ever use a crita? Yes. Is it a good uh, alternative to TV paint? Uh, for animation, I don't know. What I do, I, if you're just animating as a hobby, then I think uh, a really good substitute is um, is uh, uh, Procreate. I love animating in Procreate. It's really cool. Which animal do you like the most for drawing? Which animal? Yeah. Yeah, I like big game. So, you know, big, big... Or bears big, big animal. Cats. I shouldn't say big game, but big animals. You know, elephants and lions and bears and big cats. And... Oh, my. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Yeah, eyes are all dark. We're going to push that. We're going to change that. We're going to make it our own. He's nice and orange. I want to play a compliment. I want to play a complimentary color on that orange. So let's go blue eyes. So eyes will just pop. Although they're not going to read as blue too much because of the dark. I guess I read. That reads pretty good. So when do you know how to take a break, let's say from digital stuff? Um, What's a break? Yeah. Uh, it it it, yeah, it it depends it just it just depends on uh on uh what I'm working on and how I'm feeling. So I definitely don't want to get burned out, but I um like it, it's I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to say because it just depends on how I feel. The good thing is we do these live streams every week and so I have the ability to jump around and try different things every week. If I feel like I'm getting worn out on one thing, then I'll go over and, you know, do something like that over there okay. and just loosen up. And then I, you know, then I can go back and do whatever I was doing. Because I'm like, digital artists, how do they take a break from like the screen? Because I'm like, so. Oh yeah. Here you go, Martin Berger. Here's your orangutan. <laughs> I like this little guy. seen the orangutans at bush gardens the zookeepers play catch with their uh, with their snacks oh really <laughs> no i haven't seen that uh, what does your weekly schedule look like um if i'm not doing nowadays if i'm not doing a workshop which i've been doing a lot of lately or if I'm not at a conference, which I've been doing a lot of lately, um, it's working on Snow Bear. It's trying to get, you know, we've worked very hard to kind of carve out some time for myself so that I can get Snow Bear done. Uh, once Snow Bear is done, you know, if I'm not working on that, it's usually trying to plan a new course and coming up with a plan for that. I think our next, it's funny I'm drawing an orangutan because um We've been getting a lot of requests for a course on how to draw primates, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of those after I do Snow Bear. Snow Bear I'm hoping to have done by May. That's the goal. So we still got a ways to go.
There you go, Martin Berger. You got an orangutan. <laughs> all right, I think I'm going to call it. I know I was going to do all those other drawings, but I'm drawn out. I got to take a break. So I hope you guys had a great day today. Uh, let's go back and look at the animation. There's your orangutan, Martin Berger. Let me know if you want me to send it to you. Give uh, Shoot Dustin a private message and uh, give him an email address. Here is our animation. Uh, will you be doing a course for, uh, for with the iPad Pro? Yes, I'll be doing a course with that. Yeah, um, I'm going to be doing an animation course for Procreate on iPad Pro. So there you go. So uh, once again, remember, we've got our, our uh, workshop coming up, our camping, painting, plein air, watercolor workshop with Ronnie Williford and myself. That's going to be November 7th through the 10th. We have three spots available. So if you're interested, go check it out. Go to creatureartteacher.com slash camp. Yep. And, uh, and we will have a blast. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Bring There's your swim trunks. The, uh, oh, yeah, I'm folks. spitting all over the place. <laughs> What's that? There's also the part two art book. That yes. Is so uh, the Art of Aaron Blaze, volume one. We're almost out. So if you want to get one of those, get it now while it lasts because we only have about two or 300 copies, which sounds like a lot, but we started with 4,000. So they're going fast. And uh, we've got a volume two in pre-order. So uh, and the first 500 orders is guaranteed a signature. So if you want that, go ahead and jump in and grab it. That's uh, creatureartteacher.com slash books. And you can get also uh, in that section my book of 100 drawings, and that's available as well. Uh, that's about it. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Uh, go out and try some of these things that we did. If you're interested in animation, um, give it a shot. You, you can animate and procreate. You can animate... In a lot of different ways. Or just pick up a piece of paper. Get a notepad. Or a, uh, you know how I did it? I, I started I, I started drawing in the margins on books. Don't do that. You don't have to face books. But you can get notepads. Uh, you know, st uh, stick it notes. A pad of those. And you can animate with those. It's a lot of fun. Three by five cards. Get a stack of three by five cards and flip through them. So try, you know, very cheap, fun way to do it. So try some animation. But go out, put some beauty back into the world. That's what we do as artists. Thank you, Khaled, for hanging out with well, us thank today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, back. man, it was great. I, I always love having a guest in the office when we do this, so you can see what we do, and I always like yeah. people to meet my friends as well. But uh, Any uh, ideas for, for a future guest? No, not yet. Although, Ronnie, i, I got to get Ronnie on again. I'd like yeah. to get uh, Manny back in, too. Oh, man. Uh, oh, there's Mama. Mama just came in. There's Mama. Hey, Mama. But anyway, have a great weekend, you guys. Uh, for you members out there, I will see you on Tuesday for our uh, weekly live stream on making snow bear. That's the other thing. <clears throat> if you're interested in seeing more making of snow bear and you want to see it on a regular basis, then become a member over at creatureartteacher.com, and it's one of the side benefits, along with having access to over 500 hours of content. Who, by the way, Erica Bay finished our entire website the entire website she's all the she has gone done. through over 500 hours of educational content she's been a member for five years now i think at least and so uh and so she's, basically she's put about 100, 100 i just want to make a big shout out to erica bay and how proud we are of you and uh how incredible you are so thank you for doing that can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks so anyway have a great weekend you guys and i will talk to you later bye-bye yeah.